In Luke 22, 7-23, we see that Jesus and his disciples are celebrating Passover. We are going to discuss how Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of Passover. Our main focus will be on what it meant for Jesus to be the firstborn of all creation and what it meant for him to be made sin, though he knew no sin. But first, let's discuss the meaning of the Feast of Passover. Passover is a festival that the Jews celebrated every year to remember how God brought them out of Egypt and how he protected them from the angel of death. In fact, Exodus says that not even a dog would growl at the people of Israel the night the angel of death passed through Egypt. The death of the firstborn son is the last plague on Egypt, and the only one that required death of something for the plague to pass over the Israelites. This was the first plague that included personal death. It was a punishment for the people's sins, and if the people did not put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost, then their firstborn son would die among the firstborn sons of Egypt. The sacrifice for the Passover had to be a spotless male lamb. His blood was to be spread on the doorpost, but also they had to eat all of the roasted lamb and burn all the parts that were not edible. We see that when they ate the lamb, they had to be dressed and ready to go. They were commanded to remind their children of what God did in Egypt and how the land covered their sins. When they celebrate the Passover feast every year, the sin covering of the firstborn son later in Exodus is expounded upon. The first man or male beast to open the womb was to be the Lord's and must be sacrificed for. For man, it was a spotless male lamb. For beast, it was a firstborn male itself. But the unclean animals had to be atoned for with a spotless lamb, or its neck had to be broken. This was to consecrate the firstborn male, the one who would continue the family name, and the whole family was dedicated to God. This was a reminder throughout all generations that they were the Lord's. Colossians 1.15 tells us that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. Jesus' physical body obviously was not the first being created, since he was not born until thousands of years after the creation of the world. His part of the Trinity was not firstborn because he has existed forever. There was never a point in forever when Jesus started to exist. He just is. So, what does it mean for Jesus to be the firstborn of all creation? Well, to answer that, we have to look back at many stories in the Old Testament when the firstborn received the bulk of the inheritance. But more than that, remember what we just discussed about the firstborn having to be sacrificed for and being consecrated to the Lord. Jesus, as the firstborn of all creation, took all of our just inheritance, which is death, because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the punishment for sin is death. Our God is a God of justice, but the good news is that He is also a God of mercy, and in His mercy He did not leave us dead in our sins. Instead, He sent His Son, and just like the spotless lambs in the Old Testament, He became sin for us and died on the cross so we could live forever with Him. Jesus was consecrated and sacrificed, taking the whole world's punishment for sin on himself, becoming the firstborn for us, the one who received the just inheritance for all creation. But Jesus was also the first to rise to eternal life. That is another reason he was firstborn of all creation, because he was the firstborn from the dead, with many to follow. He arose with a new body that was eternal, receiving power to give the gift that he was seeking to give us from the beginning, which is eternal life. We are in the tomb for a little while, But it is not our ultimate destination. Your ultimate destination is determined by whether you trust Jesus or not. Because Jesus arose, we can also be certain that the tomb can merely be a temporary resting place for those who trust Jesus. With the final destination being heaven, Jesus showed that the tomb can become a womb. But the goal is not just heaven. The goal and ultimate gift is being able to be with God forever. If you would like to accept Him as Lord and Savior of your life, all you have to do is to admit that you are a sinner. Repent of your sins. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and God raised Him from the dead. Then confess Him as Lord and Savior of your life. At the Passover with the disciples, Jesus established the Lord's Supper. He said that this was His body which was broken for you and that this was His blood which was poured out for you. 
Remember what we discussed about the lamb at the Passover, that they would eat the whole lamb while they were dressed and ready to go, and this was done in remembrance of what God did in Egypt? When the disciples celebrated Passover, they did so in accordance with the law, while at the same time Jesus was pointing back to how he saved the Israelites from Egypt. He was pointing forwards to how he was saving everyone from sin and death by dying on the cross, which he would do in just a few hours. When we observe the Lord's Supper, just like the disciples, we are not eating the physical body of Jesus. But just like Passover, it is a remembrance of what God has done for us and what he saved us from. It should be a bittersweet reminder because like Jesus said, when we eat the bread, we remember that his body was broken for us. We are both the executioner as well as the one being saved. If you trust Jesus as Lord and Savior, just like him, you will rise again with a new eternal body. So today, as you celebrate Passover or the Lord's Supper, remember what Jesus did for you. Also, remember that he was the firstborn of all creation, the first to ever rise from the dead, the second Adam, the one who, if you put your trust, you will live forever in God's presence. But unlike most people who hoard what they have, Jesus does not. He freely gives salvation to all and encourages us to do the same by leading others to him. This weekend is a special one when more people than ever are open to the gospel. So invite someone to church so they can also live forever with him. Also, share the gospel on social media. We will have messages going up all weekend. If you want to share them, that would be great. You would not believe what one share can do. We are talking about people's eternities here, and that is what I want to leave you with, to share the gospel, because this is one of the times when many are open to the gospel. Click here to see last week's Bible study, or click here to see the rest of the Bible studies in the series.